What's going on everyone? It's your boy Savvy and welcome back to the Savvy Show. And in today's episode, I'm excited because we're going to be diving deep into SCP that I made a you know a small feature within another SCP animation that I reacted to. Um last week it was SCP Info Hazard SCPs Explained. So if you guys haven't seen that reaction yet, I'll probably link it somewhere in the video for you to check it out. However, it talked about this SCP briefly and it piqued my interest a lot. So I had to search for someone making a video about it and we finally found one which is on um, one of my favorite content creators for SCP non-animation reactions, the Exploring series. So I'm excited to dive deep into this one. So without any further ado, this is SCP-3007, World of Two Artists. If you guys don't know anything about it, I feel like it might be best going into this blind like me because they talked about it briefly. So I'm just excited to jump in and see what this is all about because it really piqued my interest. If you guys do end up enjoying the reaction though along the way, please remember by smashing that like button for me. It takes less than a second and it's 100% free. And also smash that sub button and hit that bell so you can stay plugged for each and every upload. And now without any further ado, let's get this show started. Also I've got to say most info hazard SCPs are more on the convoluted side of things, so it might not be as self-explanatory as other SCPs. However, nothing we can't handle. So let's get into it. Alrighty, SCP-3007, World of Two Artists. Let's go. SCP-3007, World of Two Artists. If you've been following this series up to this point, you know that dead worlds are a common enough theme in SCP. The Foundation stumbles onto an alternate dimension or reality, sees that something catastrophic happened, and slowly discovers what led to that point. Obviously, SCP-3007 is based around another such dead world, and while that in itself is not original, the interesting journey is learning about the unique scenario that played out there. Dead world. 3007 is open to some interpretation, and although I'll present my own, I encourage you to read it yourself at some point to make your own interpretation. SCP-3007 begins by explaining that it's an info hazard. Okay, so before we dive deep, this is his own interpretation. So we pretty much have to take this with a grain of salt. That's why he kind of alluded to us reading the file ourselves. So just off the rip, he's inferring. So it's not even what it's supposed to be exactly. So it kind of shows you how confusing this SCP is meaning that its anomalous effect is based around possessing information about it. Obviously, these are dangerous things to have reports about, so the article begins with a mimetic kill agent to weed out any unauthorized users. 3007 is broken up into a few different concepts, the first of which is a reoccurring hallucinogenic phenomenon that affects a handful of people around the world at any given time. There doesn't seem to be any pattern connecting these individuals, and new cases continue to spontaneously appear despite the Foundation's efforts. Anyone detected by the Foundation that is affected by this phenomenon are to be terminated immediately, as Damn. amnestics have no effect on these individuals, Crazy. and they represent a grave threat, as we'll see. So it causes these people to hallucinate, randomly at an average of four times per day typically between 50 to 80 minutes at a time. That's rather 50, inconvenient, but Holy it's shit. what they hallucinate that's really important. Each person affected by this claims that during these periods, they are transported to an alternate world, and descriptions of this world gleamed from different subjects matches up pretty closely. The hell? Well, it doesn't seem like this is any place on Earth, and they all seem to be hallucinating the same place, no one has met a fellow subject within the world. Sounds like psychedelics. While hallucinating this world, individuals can physically move around within it as normal, and their senses of sight, smell, and taste are indistinguishable from our normal reality. They do retain their senses of hearing and touch in our reality, however, allowing them to continue communicating while hallucinating. What the heck? They're communicating in our world while they're hallucinating themselves in another whole world? What the heck? How can you do that simultaneously? Since there's a bit more than just a hallucination going on here, it turns out that any injuries suffered while traversing this alternate world will be reflected on the person in our reality. Wow. This means that if you die in the dream, you die in real life. 
This is so similar to that movie called, called Synchronic on Netflix. If you guys haven't heard of it, it was with the new Captain America, the, the black dude that's playing the new Captain America in the last Infinity Wars. He's the main character. And I don't want to ruin the movie, but it has the same premise. <laughs> and that was a really good movie. Y'all should check it out. Synchronic. So far, there have been a number of subjects who have died from high altitude impacts. Additionally, any sounds originating from this alternate world can be heard within a couple meters of an affected individual, lending further credence to its actual existence. The first interview log comes from a 68-year-old South Korean female, who is the first recorded subject to be affected by SCP-3007. The woman explains that, at first, her visions of this place were blurry, like a dream, and all she could tell was that she was seeing the same place each time. Now she can see it in perfect clarity, and in her most recent hallucination, she was standing on some type of narrow suspension bridge. So this is supposed to be a legit depiction of what the world's supposed to look like from the article itself. She could tell it was daytime, but the sunlight seemed as if it was obscured by smoke, and there was a horrible stench in the air, like garbage and rotting meat. Her memories of this vision are quite vivid, and she gags just from recalling the smell. All around her were the ruins of something akin to a city, but the buildings were more like giant trees than skyscrapers. From where she was, she had to crane her neck to see the tops of the ones still standing. Damn. But most of them had fallen or been reduced to rubble. She went to the edge of the bridge and looked down, but the ground was out of view, as if the city just continued downwards into darkness. Rise of Inception. She saw thousands of other bridges like the one she was on, linking together the buildings, but many of them were also in ruins. Every structure she saw was made of a smooth, metallic material, white as bone. She didn't see anything alive, animal or plant. Is that the flesh The entire that city dead and barren. In the distance, however, she spotted a tall black pillar, thicker than any of the other buildings, and she began walking towards it. The woman begins to cry as she recounts her walk and how she came across a number of scattered corpses. The bodies seem dried up and old, and she thinks they might have been people, but their bodies were twisted and wrong. She saw one man's corpse whose bones bulged out in parts and erupted out of his skin. I want to know if this picture is a depiction of, you know, one of the worlds. And if that's the case, then this might be the flesh that hates. <laughs> and that's strange that it rhymed like that. But anyway, I really think it might be. There was a child's corpse next to him. Its head melted like wax. Some of the corpses were joined together and pressed into cubes. The interview concludes at this point as the woman continues to ramble into hysteria. The tall black pillar is seen consistently by every subject affected by 3007, always visible from when they first start their hallucination. The leading researcher for 3007 believed it to be especially significant, and so encouraged subjects to go to it and explore it. Most subjects were not very cooperative, but a 23-year-old male with an exceptional memory volunteered to check it out so as to help understand and treat his condition. His vision starts with him being about an hour walk away from the pillar, commenting while walking. The buildings in the ruined city are kilometers high, made of metal, and crisscrossed with countless bridges. He accidentally steps on a corpse's leg, and also notes the horrific smell. He says that based on the smell, there are likely a lot more corpses in each of the buildings, so he prefers to stay outside. He soon comes across a crashed fighter jet with six wings, a corpse in the six cockpit wings? split down the middle. No one else has seen aircrafts, which increase in number as he moves closer to the pillar. The smell also grows stronger. Finally, he reaches the base of the pillar, seeing that it's a cylinder, perhaps more than 40 meters thick. There are some colorful, decorative patches on it, along with some stairs leading to the top wrapped around it. The smell is nearly overwhelming at this point, Damn. as the subject sees a massive pile of countless corpses squished together around the bottom of the pillar. Jesus. The doctor urges him to go to the stairs, but the man refuses to go through the corpses to get to them. 
After some convincing, he finally agrees nice. and squishes his way across the pile. Ugh. He is eager now to climb the stairs and get away from the bodies, but notes that the people seemed like they were climbing over each other to get to the pillar before dying. Wow. A number of their faces are all staring upwards towards the top of the pillar. We'll wipe them out. As the man ascends the pillar, he remarks to the doctor that this entire place makes him feel uneasy, as he can now see that what happened to this city was not normal. I'll the say. buildings weren't just blown up or reduced to rubble, but it looks like they were reformed and squashed, like a kid playing with clay or wires. Oh no, do, we have, do we have a reality warper? Killing worlds just for fun? To him, whatever happened here, it didn't just destroy. It played with this place, including the people. Reality Warper has to be. He comes across a large mural painted onto the side of the pillar near the staircase and can see a few more, as if the pillar was designed to show the paintings off. The paintings seem to show off a story, which I'll get to in a minute. Thanks to the exceptional memory of the subject, he memorizes the various paintings and draws them after returning from the hallucination. He continues to climb the staircase, and instead of getting away from the stench, it is actually growing stronger. Uh oh. At the top of the pillar, the man screams out and throws up, claiming to see a massive dried corpse with a face ten times larger than normal, covered in arms and missing large chunks. What? There's also a final painting on top of the pillar. What is this? Oh my god. His hallucination ends depictions. at this point, and he recreates the paintings he saw. Apologies to those listening to the audio-only version of this episode, but this section might not come across the same without seeing the paintings. This is the section of SCP-3007 that is open to interpretation. Okay. Since you have the same information that I do at this point, and can see the images yourself, you can decide for yourself what happened here, but I'll give it a shot. Let's see. There is a planet depicted, with presumably a smaller moon near it, which is likely the planet that these subjects have been hallucinating. We see the six-winged aircrafts that the man saw crashed near the pillar, and then a few humanoid individuals clothed in white and drawn with red skin. Hmm. We then see a number of these red individuals, clearly happy, playing with butterflies, a cat, a camera, and a sword. Below them, a blue individual looking up and seemingly extending part of itself upwards. In the background, these parts of the blue individual coalesce into white gears. The objects that the red individuals are holding are also blue, signifying that they are connected to the blue entity. It's possible that the blue entity is some sort of deity that gifted the people of this planet with technology, or knowledge of technology. Looks like it. The three in white are perhaps the rulers of this civilization. In the second painting, we see a cloud of red erupting out of a cracked planet, overtaking two of the six-winged planes, which now Dang. appear frayed. On the cracked planet, with the peaceful world in the background, we see individuals have landed on the surface, but one seems to be crying or in pain. Another is standing defiant against something. So this red entity probably came from after killing another planet and trying to kill this one. We then see a number of humanoid figures with red strands coming from their heads and touching the surface of the cracked planet. This must be the flesh that hates, possibly, or something similar. Whatever affected the peaceful planet came from their people exploring this other nearby planet. Yo. The next painting shows the once peaceful planet, which before was blue, now fully red and torn apart. The infection that they encountered on the other planet, and presumably unleashed, had made it back to their home. Hmm. The people are in agony, crying out in pain. Red, grotesque monsters vomit out more of the red substance, and the blue entity comforts and seems to be crying onto one of the white-robed individuals, who is also infected. Probably one of the rulers? A line of people approach the blue entity, who is beginning to be covered in the red substance. A light, almost like a sunset, slowly fades out until there is only the blue entity surrounded by red. The blue entity is much smaller now, surrounded by red and black. 
it is being pulled towards a red triangle, and below it, red strands leading into red individuals. What the hell? The final painting, the one that was at the top of the pillar underneath the massive corpse, shows a red wisp landing on a blue and green planet that sure looks like Earth. Earth. It seems that there was this planet that had their own protective deity who cared about them and provided them with knowledge and security. All was well until the people of that planet eventually traveled to another nearby planet and uncovered something very bad. Caught the virus, which is probably the flesh that hates. That's what I'm assuming. And it came back on the world, contaminated it. That's why the world, when they depicted it being good, was blue, which is, you know, the creator that was blue. And now when it was destroyed, it turned red. And, and the red mist that was on Earth probably was the blue creator pushing everyone that was on that world to safety and brought them to Earth. And maybe we're from that other world, but we have no knowledge of it because the blue creator like took the knowledge of our previous world away from our memory so we could live happy. That could be a possibility. This infection made its way back to the home planet and tore it apart. Although what exactly it was is ultimately left to our imagination. I'll say the flesh I hate. The blue deity tried to stop it and mm -hmm. save the people. And it's possible that it saved some, somehow. But ultimately the planet was left very she dead. She probably sacrificed herself. Further bewildering, the last surviving people that managed to draw the paintings on the pillar knew about our planet and signaled that this infection had made its way to us. There's a lot of questions left that I really don't have an answer for. Oh, so he's saying maybe the infection made the way onto Earth. That's what it looks like. I thought that maybe the, you know, the creator actually brought the people that was somewhat infected or, you know, just the people that were red, that were just normal to Earth. That's what I figured, but. At the start, the article informed us that SCP-3007 was an info hazard and that merely knowing about it was the problem. Yeah. Presumably, that knowledge the case, of this though? infection was what destroyed the other planet, and that the reason these people in our world are spontaneously having these visions is because of this infection reaching our planet. But why us? Did the other people have visions of some other dead world? How did they know that our world had been infected? Will the fact that we have an SCP foundation mean that it will be much harder for this infection to spread across our planet? Okay, I actually really do believe the people that are having these hallucinations are probably descendants from people from the other world, which still have that infection within them. And when they actually see themselves in another place, it's their old world. That's what I feel, because it wouldn't make any sense why is it happening out of nowhere, you know? It's perfectly possible that the dreams are actually being caused by whatever is responsible for the infection as a means of spreading information about itself. But if it's capable of causing dreams like that, there has to be a more efficient way of spreading itself among a populace. Yeah, it's definitely not the flesh I hate. The fact that a person can die if they die during these hallucinations lends an even greater quality to the infection's power. Way stronger than Ultimately, that. like I said, you'll have to make up your own mind about what exactly is going on here and what will happen in the future with 3007. I think it's very likely, though, that the infection is being caused by a sapient entity, possibly a deity itself. Yeah. Refer back to the title of this SCP, World of Two Artists. Perhaps both the blue deity and the red deity see themselves as artists of creation, yeah, yeah. but one was significantly more powerful and more twisted. That would make sense. SCP-3007 is definitely not your standard dead world scenario. This is really cool. And the addition of the really impressive paintings lend it a hauntingly beautiful quality. Yeah. Not often seen among SCPs. This was definitely unique. This was real. Okay. This is one of my, probably one of my favorite non-animations that I reacted to in a while. Because I really like how the pictures actually, you know, came together with the story itself. And it let us as readers or listeners make our own representation of what's actually going on within the pictures and the stories. So please feel free to let me know your guys' interpretation about this SCP. I More than anything, I really want to know because I could be wrong. I, I think I'm probably wrong, but or I could be right about certain aspects of how I feel, how it transpired with the pictures. I'd love to hear what you guys think about your own interpretation and your feedback against what I think. So yeah, let me know in the comment section below. And also remember, if you did enjoy this react, then please smash that like button and then hit that bell so you can stay a plug for each and every upload. And like always, if you're not already subbed to the channel, what you doing? If you made it this far, smash that button. And let's have fun together. So unfortunately, that concludes today's episode though. However, I'll catch you guys on the next one.